Hey everyone, Leland Best here. Just got my new copy of Corel's Video Studio X9. So I wanted to cut a video tutorial so that you could get a full understanding of what it takes to install, register, and upgrade this software to the latest patch release. Uh, following this video, I'm gonna to put together another tutorial that will allow you to get a good idea of how the functionality and features work inside of Corel X9. Okay, so here we have the installation screen for Corel Video Studio X9. Uh, I just received this today. It's uh, May 25th, and of course, 2016, uh, X10, I'm sure, is going to be around the corner before long, but I've been running X7. I, I really love the software. I use it all the time for all of my video productions and my splash screens and anything that I do, any editing that I do in video has always been through Corel Video Studio. Uh, I have played with Camtasia in the past, but I just seem to always go back here. So uh, what I wanted to do is do a quick demo of X9 and then get inside the software and show you guys some really cool features about it. So let's get started. This is the installation screen for Corel Video Studio X9 when you receive the download uh, executable. Uh, the software price for X9 is $100, $99.99. And you can upgrade from any previous versions like X5 through X8. Uh, for $79.99. Uh, what you'll do is you'll need to get your serial number key through your purchase. Uh, obviously, it'll be on your invoice, so I'll be pasting mine in here, but this will be cut out uh, during the video production. I'm just going to pop it in here real quick and then take it out before this video is complete. Okay, so once you get your installation software key inside the system, you'll be taken to the license agreement. Uh, you can read through all this. Obviously, none of us ever read these installation agreements, but you really should. It's basically that you're given use to uh, access the software. It doesn't mean you own the software. It just gives you the rights. So we'll go ahead and pass through that. And then you could become part of their user experience improvement program, which basically collects non-identifiable information about your use of the product. If it breaks while you're using it, you can send instant uh, responses to Corel to let them know what's going on. I don't have a problem with being part of those programs, but at certain times, I, I just want you guys to know that you can remove the checkbox from there and remove yourself from that type of situation. So there are two versions of this software. There's a 64-bit version and a 32-bit version. The computer will detect that you have whichever operating system you prefer to install. I highly recommend using the 64-bit version of the program because it does run much smoother. It takes up uh, the resources that are available to it from the CPU that allow it to uh, render videos much quicker. Uh, you can download both. You have the rights to both. So if you want to download both the 64 and 32-bit versions, I think the world's getting away from 32-bit processing, but you may find you have an older machine that's not upgraded, or you may be running on a laptop. And in those cases, you may find the 32-bit software is a necessity because maybe your laptop isn't upgraded with the 64-bit version of Windows. And sometimes that happens when a lot of people went through the recent upgrade to Windows 10. They didn't realize they were getting a duplicate install of whatever they had on their systems already. So if you had a version 32 or 32-bit version of Windows on your machine, then you had to install the 32-bit version. But you could download the 64-bit version and then do a full reinstall on your system to get the 64-bit. So I highly recommend 64. Um, this allows you to download the installation files to a location on your machine that's going to be available in case your installation breaks or in case you need to uninstall it for some reason and you want to reinstall it. Uh, it'll put all of the installation files in a certain location. Now in my case, I don't really want it to be, because I have an SSD drive, I don't like to store installation files on it because it's a very limited size drive. It's only 240 gig. And this takes up about two and a half gig of space. So I'm actually gonna put the installation files on a separate space on a different drive, which is a, an actual hard drive uh, that I run inside the same system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the download and install. You could do the download only and then install the files afterward, but I'm gonna go through the entire process and we'll see how this works out. Once these files get on the system, then we can go through the setup and take it from there. All right, we're back. So we can see here that Corel Video Studio X9 has installed correctly. Um, well, basically, we're going to find that out when we actually fire it up. But it does recommend that you back up the downloaded installation files located 
on D, which was where we placed the installation files manually at the beginning of the install. Uh, the default would have been somewhere on the C drive. And we can go ahead and finish. Uh, just to continue on with the installation here of uh, Video Studio X9 by Corel, I wanted to let folks know that when they receive their email for their download link for the software itself, uh, within that email you're going to be told you have a certain valid uh, installation time to pull it off of the email link, though that doesn't uh, void the key in any way for the license. Uh, you'll take the license key, which is going to be blacked out in this video, obviously, and use that for the first installation. Now you have a two-year download insurance uh, that you can, I believe you pay for that when you first place your order. I was given grace to have the two-year download insurance included in my package. And then you also have the benefit for the ultimate version to receive the bonus for the new blue film effects, which is an add-on to Corel uh, Visual Studio X9. So there should also be a download link there, and I'm going to pause the video, so I'm going to scroll up, scroll down here, but you're going to see uh, probably a static jump to the next part of this, where you'll be able to go directly to a download link for a, another product executable that you'll have to run in order to finish the install. So let's head over to where that downloaded executable is. If we go to our downloads folder, we'll find our new blue installation file. We double click on that we'll be asked whether we want to approve the install go next and it's going to note that you're getting the full effects uh, basically we could take the film effects which is the full collection or you could just have the camera effects the color effects the damage effects the express effects or the pro effects and these are basically overlays to the film production so you can get that old grainy film look and things like that it looks like the movie might have been made in the 20s so we're just going to say next and get the full collection. It's going to ask what you're installing them for because New Blue FX is actually a separate software package that can be added to several different video editors. And here we just want to make sure that we're using it for our Corel Video Studio 64 bit. So we, they automatically check both boxes for us. And we just need to register the product. Up the agreement. And it's going to ask me where I want to put the files. Uh, where that's going seems fine for me. That'll be under a new blue folder and in my program files directory. So I find it interesting. This must be a 32-bit software that they're installing in the x86 folder. Install. Add a path to Corel. Uh, the plugin will be installed for Corel Video Studio and paths listed in the table below. Uh, we don't have any paths, so we're going to go ahead and add a path to this particular program. Uh, for this PC, it's going to be located on the C drive. And we should be able to find under Program Files, we have Corel, and we have two versions of Corel. I have the Ultimate X7, and I'm going to go ahead and add one under X9. This will be where it's installed for the path for that. I should be able to add one other path. I'm going to go ahead and install it with the previous version that I have. Now, program files, you'll note you have two different directories. You have the program files and the program files x86. The x86 is for 32-bit programs. The program files directory in Windows 10 is for 64-bit programs. So you should find the location for your Corel 64-bit version underneath your program files directory. Okay, so we're going to add those. It's been installed to both. We can finish that up. Product key. Drop that in there. And go ahead and activate my version. So it was obviously an error in the install, though it wasn't really an error. I, act, I pressed the activate button again and it seemed to work. The next thing we want to do is go over and get our account opened up at Corel. Uh, you can head over to the support ticket and you should receive an email with a link that tells you to head over and go ahead and sign in. Um, it's going to ask you to register your products. Now I'm signed into the back end right now on my account and you can go ahead and register your new product here by simply entering the product serial code and the language that it's in and when you register it all of your back end products will be available. If you happen to lose your download you'll be able to re-download the product that you have. Um, that is if you get the, the two year backup guarantee. But the other thing that's really important about this is you want to get back to the actual support page so that you can download any patches 
uh, that may be available. So if we go to support, patches and updates, let's go here to the download page and this is the link where you're going to find updates for all of Corel's products. So you're going to want to go to Video Studio and this is where you have Video Studio X9, X8, X7, X6 and X5. And now I'm upgraded to X9 but I do not have Service Pack 2 yet so I want to make sure I download over here for the 32 and 64 bit link. I'm going to keep this file on my system which showed as an SP2EXE. I'm going to go ahead and run that file and this is going to allow me to patch the software that I received during my purchase. Now I'll be currently up to date and this last update just came out on 415 of 2016. Very recent update. And that should do it. So now that we've been updated we can confirm that process Head over to Visual Studio Pro. Once it opens up, we can verify that the patch took place by heading over to the settings under Help, About. We should be able to see that this is 19.2.0.4, which would imply that Service Pack 2 has been installed on. We should be all set. For more cool tutorials like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel.